Oh. Should I have called first? No, not at all. You're my favorite kind of surprise. Courtney Canelo's that is a beautiful coat. Oh, this old thing. Is it cashmere? <laughs> what else? Well, I love a woman with good taste. So tell me, to what do I owe this honor? I come bearing gifts. Uh-oh. Should I beware? <laughs> no, it's just a small thank you for all the financial advice. Whoa. It's a Rolf Langer. Courtney, these things cost a... Shush, shush. I finally settled things with my inheritance. I can afford a little splurge. Oh, I see. Well, merci. <laughs> I'm James Owens. I called about the ad. Oh, James, come on in. This is the place. One bedroom, kitchen, furnished, move-in condition. Nice. Uh, the good views from the bedroom window, the cherry blossoms will be in full bloom in about a month. Great to wake up to. Yeah, all I can see out of this window is that old brownstone next door. Hello. Hey, you on? About 20 minutes. Are you off? 10 minutes ago. You're still here? <laughs> well, I was starving, so I thought I'd stop to get something to eat. Hospital food? You need to get out more, really. So is that why you uh, changed your hair? What do you mean? Well, it just looks so sexy. Looks fantastic. Are you trying to impress that man of yours? Or somebody else? Mind if I join you? Uh, no, I'm... Y sure. Uh, please, take a seat. This is Sebastian. Sebastian, this is Eve. Hello. Hi. Let me guess. Uh, pediatrician. Well, if I had to do it all over again, probably... Oh, neurosurgeon. Actually, Sebastian is not a doctor. I'm here on a consulting job. Oh, well, it's nice to meet you anyway. Nice to meet you. Thanks. Uh, would you like some salad? I've already eaten. But I would like an apartment. Do either of you know of any vacancies? No. Uh, Ellen, the top floor of your building, remember? Oh, right. I forgot. She has been working way too hard. Honestly, you have. First, you're eating hospital food. Gross. Second of all, you forgot about the vacancy in your own building. What are we going to do with her? So, Ellen, how big is the apartment? The other side of town would actually be a little bit more convenient. It's closer to my work. Oh, well, uh, I'll keep my eyes and ears open, then. I have to go. Ellen, you... You just... You haven't even finished your salad. You said you were starving. Well, I... Actually, I'm running late, and, um... It was good to see you again. Bye-bye. Come on in. I'd uh, offer you some lunch, but it was Sloppy Joe's, so no <laughs> pun intended. I just had a protein shake anyway, so. Ah, uh, you want some juice? Sure. Yeah, I just saw your car outside. I thought I'd stop in and say hi. Check in on the new domestic arrangements. Is it bliss yet? 
Definitely takes some getting used to, some compromising, but, uh, yeah, you know, bliss is the word. <laughs> Starting to get that Scanlon lived-in look. I'm not even gonna ask what you mean by that. <laughs> so you and, uh, Ellen think of cohabitating in the near future? Well, we haven't made any plans in that direction, no. So you want to, uh, keep shooting the breeze? Or are you gonna tell me what's wrong? I'll take it. A month to month or one year lease? Month to month. Oh, that's 30 bucks more. Oh, that's okay. I don't know how long I'll be in town. You know how unpredictable business can be. Ha, <laughs> tell me about it. Yeah, so, is there something I need to sign? Well, I'll need, uh, first and last month's rent, if you could write me a check. Is for cash that. okay? <laughs> cash is always okay. All right. There you go. First and last. Uh, keys. Right. I'll have the paperwork for you to sign first thing in the morning. I'll be here. Oh, and the place is perfect. Just what I was looking for. Wish there are all as pleasant as you, Mr. Owens. I'll see you first thing in the morning. Okay. That's what I was looking for. The watch looks handsome on you. Mm. It does, doesn't it? I'm glad you like it. <laughs> Listen, why don't we take off this coat and I can come up with a proper way to thank you. Uh, um, tempting. But I can't stay. Excuse me, I'm being rejected here? Well, not by choice, believe me. I just... I have to take Neil over to Mary's, and then I need to prepare for tomorrow. Why, what's tomorrow? An appointment with my banker. Besides, oh. I wouldn't want to wear out my welcome. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> That's not possible. See, now whatever you're thinking, you hold that. You look at you, my, my, my. I love your hair. Thanks. Can't a person make a little change about the entire world? <laughs> Commenting on it. Yeah, well, just a little sensitive there, aren't we? But I, I like it. But I'm glad you're here. Even if you came over with no hair and you were completely bald, I would love it because I need a break. I've been working too hard and I ordered lunch. You want some? I had lunch. Hmm. Oh, no, I, I didn't. I looked at lunch. I had a perfectly good salad. Yeah, I was starving, and all I did was look at it. Whoa, this isn't good. This is tea time. This is chamomile tea time. Sit down. Come here. Give me your coat. Sit down. Sit down. Tea? I'm going to boil the water. Stay. Don't move. No, I don't need tea. I need to discuss something with you. Okay. I am here for you. Whatever this is, we can get through this together. Sebastian visited me at the hospital. That's it? He's making me crazy. Oh. What exactly is he doing? Being a perfect gentleman. Oh, that, huh? Darn, that gets so annoying. It's, it's just that when I'm with him, it, it all comes flooding back. That, that night, the costumes, the moonlight, the music, the kiss. His eyes, blazing eyes. <laughs> Electricity. A thousand volts. Uh, and you just can't help yourself, can you? No. Oh, <laughs> I hate this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so wait. Really, truly, tell me, what is going on? Well, he showed up at the hospital yesterday, and he kept going on about how fate brought us back together, how fate helped him find my car when it was stuck, and I said, it had nothing to do with fate. It's just coincidence. That's all. We should go our separate ways. Mm hmm And you convinced him. I was firm. You did not convince him. I didn't convince myself. Oh. You know, with all my logic. Uh-huh, yeah. Uh, beginning to think that maybe Sebastian and I were thrown together by fate. Mm. So, 
it was tasty. Well, you seem to enjoy it. Well, you should never let a good salad go to waste. I'm sure Ellen would approve. Well, I'm sure she would. So how do you and Ellen know each other? Lady of the Stars. That's it. I'm sitting here, you're looking at me, you look so familiar, and it hits me. You're the Lady of the Stars in the infomercial. Well, gee, you make me feel like a movie star. You were lovely. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I, I was like a last-minute replacement. Uh, it was one of those, gee, the model broke her leg at the last minute, so could you fill in, that sort of thing. Well, they lucked out. Oh, my, you are filling my head with flattery. I don't know if my ego could take much more. But since you're on a roll, go on. I was the man. You were the man? In the story, I was the Duke. Wait a minute. You're real? Last time I checked. I had no idea that story was about real people. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, okay, okay. So you met someone and fell in love all in one day? Well, something like that. Oh, did you ever see the woman again? Yes. And it was powerful and sensuous and romantic. And it didn't work out. Not the way I hoped it would. Oh, man. Well, so did it really happen in Venice? No, in New Orleans, at the Mardi Gras. Really? Well, you know, Lucy made that infomercial. Was Lucy Coe the, the woman of Mardi Gras? Oh, good. Uh, okay, I didn't think so, because uh, you and Lucy, I don't think you guys would get along. And you'd know what I meant if you ever met Lucy. Are you okay? I'm fine. You're sweating. I'm just a little lightheaded. I'm okay. Have you eaten today? Yeah, this morning. Mm -hmm. Do you have chest pains, palpitations? No, I'm okay. Are you having trouble breathing? I'm fine. Okay. You know what? Let's take you downstairs and we'll run some tests. No, please. No test. <clears throat> no, really, it's okay. It will not take any time at all. I promise I'll get you in and out of there faster than you could say Mardi Gras. Doctor, Eve, please, sit. My dizziness is a result of changes in my blood pressure. The pharmacy here at Port Charles wouldn't fill my prescription because it's out of state. I was hoping Ellen would help me out. But she's gone, so I was wondering if I could impose upon you. It's no imposition. Just give me the name of your doctor in, uh, where, New Orleans? Yes. Okay. Dr. Charles Kearns, New Orleans General, mm -hmm. area code 504 555 okay. 0100. Okay. Kearns. Yeah, I've heard of him. He's a good man. Doesn't he specialize? In cardiology. Yes. Careful. Nobody can see me. We don't want to blow it now. The, the sun shining that way. We're in the shadows. This place is perfect. There's even a view of the garden. Tell me I've done good. <sighs> Very good. I know. What about you? Well, maybe it was the Rolf Linger watch. But Chris totally buys him an heiress. He's eating it up. Doesn't suspect a thing. Well, she's buying, then I'm buying it. Uh, maybe she charged all that stuff. Are you kidding? This watch, that coat? No way. No. Somehow Courtney Canales has managed to come up with a truckload of money. Hm. Not from the inheritance. You sure about that? I'm positive. She and Neil were both cut out of John Canellis' will. They didn't get a dime. Interesting. Very interesting. What is this woman trying to pull? All right, I spoke with Dr. Kearns. I'm writing you a prescription for your nitroglycerin pills and spray, and I'm also prescribing something for your pressure, too. Sorry to be a pain in the neck. Yeah, how dare you interfere with my real work. So, do you have any chest pains? Not at the moment. 
How often? I know I have a connective tissue disorder, which will eventually kill me. Probably sooner than later. That's aim for later. I'm all for that. Call me if your symptoms flare. In the meantime, I'll arrange to have copies of your medical records transferred here. This information is strictly between the two of us. Of course. Doctor-patient confidentiality. You don't repeat this to anyone. So come on, Matt, spill. I want to talk about you. I mean, these new living arrangements, they're working out? Yeah, they're working out fine, just like I said, in spite of the uh, Scanlon lived-in look. <laughs> And your wedding plans are coming along? Wedding plans are moving along nicely. Oh, do you guys have a caterer? What are you, the wedding police? Can a guy ask about his friend's nuptials? You can ask me about the centerpieces. You can ask me about the bridesmaid's dresses, for all I care. Mm. But that is not why you're here. Is that obvious? Is it Alan? <sighs> Some old boyfriend of hers showed up. Showed up? Yeah, I just tracked her down. Some guy she met... Ten years ago for one day. It's kind of weird. Well, he just claims he wants to be friends, but... Ah, something about this whole situation makes me uneasy. Well, look, he's dangerous. Oh, no, it's nothing like that. But call me jealous. Call me paranoid. But my gut feeling tells me that this guy is not telling the truth. You know, you cannot fight fate. If you say that one more time... It's true, though. It is just true. You can't Don't say fight... it. Listen, you also cannot overspeak an ultimate truism. That is the silliest thing you've ever said. Fine. Just don't listen to me. I'm sorry. I'm taking this all out on you, Lucy. I'm the one who's behaving like an idiot. It's okay. I understand. It's just you really can't fight... Your feelings. You know, Matt is the only man in my life. And I don't want to do anything that might jeopardize our relationship. You won't. You know, I don't owe Sebastian a thing. I mean, how could I? I only knew him one day. One day of celebration, of beignets, of walks in the moonlight, of stars, and romance. Mystery. It's ridiculous. Mm -mm. It's destiny. That settles it. Oh, what? So, so you're giving in? No, I'm going to end it completely. Oh, it's impossible to be friends with him. I, <laughs> he comes near me, I turn into a blithering idiot. No, I cannot be his friend. I can't see him. Period. So I said, show me the most expensive telescope in the store. And he said, well, ma'am, you're looking at it. And I said, well, then, wrap it up. It must be nice. Oh, Frank, you can spin, too. You just can't be conspicuous about yeah, don't it. Don't worry. Now, I, on the other hand, am a wealthy heiress. I can just spin my grieving little heart out. <laughs> hey, check this out. Italian chocolate. Ooh, again. I can't buy zillion-dollar telescopes, but I figured no one would get suspicious over food. Filet mignon, German beer. Oh, look, this cheese costs 18 bucks. <laughs> At least I'll eat like a king. Compliments of Julie. Where's the champagne? I bet you thought I forgot. Did you ask for... Only the best? But of course. Good boy. But before you pour... Check this out. You can practically read their newspaper from here. Yeah, well, let's not get so carried away that we lose sight of Chris. Now, is this a hint of discomfort I'm detecting? Is this about Joe, or is this about Joe with Karen? It's about bringing Chris Ramsey to his knees. Okay, whatever you say. Hello? Hey, sexy. Hi. Speak up the devil. Chris, I was, I was just thinking about you. Well, what a coincidence. Do you have any dinner plans yet? Well, I was going to eat in, but there's really not anything here but peanut butter. Peanut butter? Oh, no, 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 no. A woman like you should be eating caviar. 
Well, Neil is staying the night with his grandmother. Oh. Is that a yes to dinner, then? Absolutely. All right. Hurry. Uh-huh. He wants to take me to dinner. This is good. This is great. Sunday, March 21st, join Whoopi Goldberg for the 71st Annual Academy Awards presentation. ABC Sunday, March 21st. Congratulations to All My Children's Cameron Matheson, winner of a Soap Opera Digest Award.